throws that sin back in his face. And he says, David, you're the man. You're the one who did this horrible thing. I want you to notice David's response. The first thing we do to overcome our past is this. We are honest about our current situation. The first point in your outline, if we're going to overcome our past, if I'm going to overcome the things from my past, I have to be honest about my current situation. Where am I right now? We can no longer stuff it. We can no longer ignore it. We can no longer say, that's okay, I'm fine, it's all in the past. We have to be honest about it. Now, I want you to notice how honest and real David gets with God. He just goes before God, and he just lays out this amazing prayer. I want you to look at what he says. Under outline, verse 1 through 4, David says this, Have mercy on me, O God, because of your unfailing love. Because of your great compassion, blot out the stains of my sins. Wash me clean from my guilt. Purify me from my sin. Do you think this is a pretty honest prayer? What do you guys think? Yeah, look at that. Blot out the stains. Cleanse my guilt. Purify me from my sin. For I recognize my rebellion. It haunts me day and night. Against you and you alone have I sinned. Now think about that. I, this always puzzled me. But I, was, I thought about that and I thought, okay, he sinned against Bathsheba. He sinned against Uriah. He sinned against the nation of Israel. And he's standing there and he says, I've done all that. But the greatest sin, God, is this sin I've done against you. Against you and you alone have I sinned. I have done what is evil in your sight. You will be proved right in what you say. And your judgment against me is what, guys? God, you're going to be fair. I know. The truth is, if we're going to get past our hurts in life or those things from the past, we have got to be honest about it. Now, some people respond to the past in a lot of different ways. And I just want to throw some out out at you this morning. Some people try to respond to the things that happened in the past by just forgetting about it. I'll just move on. I won't think about it. Put it out of my sight. Some people try to run from their past. Isn't that true? And they try all kinds of things to escape. They get drunk. They do drugs. They might get in a bunch of relationships with a bunch of different people, all in order to escape their past. Some people just try ignoring it. And if you ask them, they'll say, I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm okay here. Some people try to get past their past by blaming other people. Have you ever met that person? Well, none of it's my fault. Everything has to do with my parents or that teacher or somebody in the past. And they try to just put it off on somebody else. Some people try to just cover up their hurts. They cover it up. They don't want anybody to know about it. The problem is that never works. It never works just to ignore the things of your past. Well, what do you do? I want to give you three things. You might want to write it down somewhere on your, on your outline. You've got to be honest with three people. Now, notice this. First of all, you have to be honest with yourself. You have to own up to it. You have to say out loud, maybe in your room, this hurts. That experience has really affected me right now. This is who I am today. Secondly, you got to be honest with God. And you go in your room or you go off somewhere and you get really loud and you start yelling and you get angry and you just vent all to God. And you say, God, this is who, who I am. This is what has happened. But the, the thing about that, that that I know from the Bible is that God already knows God already cares, but he still wants us to depend on him. He wants us to be honest with him. The second, the third person you talk to is somebody that you can trust, a friend of yours, somebody that you totally can be honest with. Say, you know what? This has happened in my life. This is where I am. I want to move past that. For David, he had to get real about his situation. Notice the thing he had just done to Bathsheba and Uriah and ruined that family. Ruined a nation. Now think about this. He thought that he hid everything. And yet billions of people from that time have been reading the story about him and this woman. We're reading about it today. 
He thought he covered it up. And yet everybody is reading about it on a Sunday morning. Now think about that, guys. When we think we can cover it up or we can just forget it or ignore it or pretend like it didn't happen, the Bible says God knows. God knows. And we can be honest with him about that. The second thing we need to do in order to move past our past that we can learn from David is this. Ask God to bring restoration in our life. Ask God to bring restoration. And the funny thing about this is I've noticed that sometimes you have to ask God over and over again. And it's not because God's not listening. Or he can't hear you. It's because maybe you or I need to say it again and again. So we would remember who we're trusting. God, I need help with this area. God, this is my past. I want to overcome it. God, every day we're saying the same sort of thing. God, help me. And we ask him to bring restoration from our lives. Now notice what David said in his prayer to God. Take a look at what he says. He says, purify me from my sins. And I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Oh, give me back my joy again. You have broken me. Now let me rejoice. He's just totally honest. And he says, God, I know I did this bad thing. God, forgive me. Bring back the joy. Help me rejoice about you. Notice what it says. Don't keep looking at my sins. Remove the stain of my guilt. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Do not banish me from your presence. And do take your Holy Spirit from me. We say, God, restore us. Restore us. Now, some of you, I was just saying, in a room this size, had somebody come along. That has hurt you in the past. Now, I was thinking about this, and I, I just thought of some things. Let me throw this out at you. Some authority or some adult, some authority figure has come along in your past and has said something like this. You're stupid. You're ugly. You're never going to amount to anything. I'm embarrassed to call you my child. You're uncoordinated. You're dumb. Why can't you be as smart as your brother or sister? People have said things like that, isn't it true? Now notice this, they've said things like this, you're worthless and you've bought into it. You've bought hook, line and sinker, everything that they've thrown at you. And, and some people, they take that in their lives and it's in their lives 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, all the way up, even 60, 70 years of their life and they're still living by what that person said about them. Well, how do you get over something like that? You say, God, restore me. Help me to start seeing things the way you see them, God. Let me give you a couple of suggestions. If you have something in your past that you need to be healed from or you need to, God's restoration in your life, do, do these three things. Number one is this. Pray that God would heal your memories. That he would heal you from your memories. Those things that hurt, those open wounds, that he would begin that process even today. Secondly, you gotta start filling your mind with God's word. Okay, this is what those people said about you, but what does God say about you? God says, you're my child, I love you. That God demonstrated his love for us, that he loved us so much that he was willing to go to a cross. That Jesus said, I have come that you may have an abundant life. God has said a bunch of great things about you, but the problem is you don't know it because you don't know God's word. And so you fill your mind with God's word. God, help erase those memories. Heal those memories. God, help me to start thinking about what you say about me. The third thing you got to do is you got to believe it. You got to believe what God says about you. You know, I've talked with people who have said, you know, Pastor, I heard what you said, and I believe that that's true, but I don't believe that it, it applies to my life. And I, I, I just want to grab that person and say, it's talking about you. Nobody is perfect. Nobody is, uh, has it all together. God is talking about you when he says, I love you. I want you to notice Psalm 55, 22. 
Let's read this out loud together. You guys with me so far still? Amen. Let's read it out loud. Give your burdens to the Lord and he, he will take care of you. Let's read that out loud with some more excitement this morning. You guys ready? I'm sick. You're not. Let's read it out loud. I'm yeah. going to be quiet. I want to hear you read. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. Do you believe that? Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of that. That's interesting. That's a good thing, Pastor.